Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome to another week of the Monday Morning Show. I'm Noah. I'm Ashley. And we are your hosts for the Freedom Village Monday Morning Show. We cannot wait to tell you what's going on this week because it's another beautiful week in the neighborhood. So much fun this week. You know, it's the middle of summer. Like we're halfway through, which is July kind of crazy. is next week. July is next week. So we're just living, living the best lives. I'm loving these late, late sunsets. Mm -hmm. So good. And we've got a lot of fun stuff going on. So we let's do. get into it. We do. Well, before we get into Freedom oh. Village news, we've got some fun things for you. Well, fun, fun enough. Fun enough. I just want to talk about um, an underappreciated household item. Is it underappreciated? I don't think that we take enough time to appreciate it. Well, let's take some time to appreciate okay. it. What are we appreciating? Well, today is World Refrigeration Day. World, refri World Refrigeration, not Refrigerator. World Refrigeration Day. Wow, okay, yeah. that is a big thing. It is. The first mechanical refrigerator yeah. came around a couple hundred years ago. That's it? Yeah. Wow. So before then they were burying stuff underground to keep things cold or it was cured or... Using salt and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yep, there were. I read something about Egyptians using ancient Egyptians um, having ice storage in certain places. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I but guess we really don't think about how different li our lives would be without We don't. It's changed how people can eat and how much food you can have and yeah. grocery stores. You couldn't have a grocery store like we have today because of nothing pre refrigeration. Was good. Exactly. Huh. Yeah, yeah. that is yeah. underappreciated, I yeah. think. Let's I'm glad we're taking this time. I know it's really important yeah, it is. to recognize the refrigerator and 99% so. of US homes have at least one refrigerator. At least. At least. I have two. Oh. I just have one and mine's baby. It's a mini refrigerator. Not quite like a mini fridge. It's like a step above that. It's okay. like a 3 quarters. I don't want to stray too much here. <laughs> but are you taller than your refrigerator? A lot taller than my refrigerator. That's funny. You should send us a picture. <laughs> of how much taller I am. I think I'm at least a head taller than it. Okay. We need to take a look at that. Okay. I'll take a picture for you. Okay. That's really great. Great. Um, do you know how big the largest refrigerator is? I bet it's it taller than me. <laughs> it is 16.7 miles long. Now. I'm sorry. You just said miles? I did say miles. This is not like uh, where you put your eggs. What do you put in there? Okay, so it is part of the Large Hadron Collider, which is a particle accelerator on the French-Swiss border. Oh, so it like has a purpose it has other a purpose. than... <laughs> okay. I say don't ask for more details about what it does, but it is 16.7 miles long. That is a lot of, refri of refrigeration. It is a lot of refrigeration. I'm glad we have it. I am too. Aww. Aww. So take some time, say thank you to your refrigerator. <laughs> and I think we do have a picture of me, so let's take a look at that now. So we've got some exciting uh, summer events happening this week, don't we, Ashley? We do. My favorite tonight. <gasps> tonight. Six thirty, beach walk and Captain Sunday. Mmm, Captain Sunday. Captain Sunday. What's your go-to Captain Sunday? Sunday. Oh. I don't really have a go-to Captain Sunday okay. Sunday, but I love a kitty twist cone with rainbow sprinkles. They have to be rainbow sprinkles. They cannot be chocolate sprinkles. Uh, chocolate vanilla twist or chocolate and vanilla? Okay, twist. see, I love a strawberry twist with sprinkles, rainbow sprinkles. Rainbow. It has to be, it has rainbow, to be sprinkles. rainbow sprinkles. Rainbow. My mom always gets chocolate sprinkles, and I just no, it's not the same. I can't agree with her on that. Mm -mm. No, but. The strawberry twist, strawberry mm -hmm. vanilla. Mm -hmm. Do they have that at Captain Sunday? Yes, they do. Oh, is it like the um, flavor nope. burst? No, it is out of their regular soft serve machine. I might have to try that sometime. It's delicious. Okay, great, good. All right, so if you are looking for something new to get at Captain Sunday tonight, maybe try a twist, either strawberry or regular with rainbow sprinkles. You might be surprised. You might. Do you get it in a cake cone? No, you get it in a cup. Oh. See, I'm a little messy with all the sprinkles everywhere and a cone. <laughs> one time, nobody cares about this, but one time I got a strawberry twist dipped in chocolate and then dipped in sprinkles. And let me tell you, that was the messiest thing. I looked like a toddler eating an well, ice cream cone. Well, and let me tell you, as someone that worked at an ice cream store, that's one of the hardest things to do. 
is to dip it in the chocolate and then roll it in sprinkles before the, the chocolate, chocolate hardens. hardens and without making just a huge mess. Okay, well, if I ever order it again, I will be sure to leave a big tip. It takes some real skill. I dropped many a cone trying to make them both dipped and rolled. It's hard. I never thought about that. <laughs> All right. No, I feel bad. Oh, no, it, it was kind of a fun challenge, okay. but it was difficult. It's messy eating, though. Yeah. Sprinkles everywhere. Well, anyway, <laughs> we're heading to the beach and to catch on Sunday at 6.30 tonight. So make sure you're signed up on Touchtown and then head on down to the bus at yes. 6.30 to join them. And what do we have tomorrow? Well, first thing, 10 o'clock, Touchtown help in the Michigan room with Sandy. So if you are having trouble navigating Touchtown, just have some questions. Sandy's here to help you out. Wonderful. Yes. And... We have Village Artists at 11 a.m. Yes. So what are, are they doing? We are actually going to Pilgrim Cemetery to oh, nice. create. Yes. So nice peaceful area and mm -hmm. there's lots of different kind of landmarks there. Yeah. And little places to sit and whatnot. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so that'll be yeah. fun. And then Tuesday night at 645, we have the weekly American Legion Band concert. So that'll be down at the Collin Park Band Shell? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Collin Park Band Shell. So that's always a hit, and they just, they're such a nice band. It's such a nice concert to go to. So mm -hmm. make sure you sign up on Touchdown and head on down to that. Wednesday morning, we kick off the day with our monthly rack meeting at 9.30 in the auditorium. So head up and or down and learn about what's going on, ask questions of the rack committee. And at noon, we'll continue with those Pillar Church organ concerts. So make sure you head on to that for a little 30-minute concert by another local organist. Nice. And Wednesday evening, we've got another summer favorite outing. I'm so excited. This one is so much fun. It is. We're going to Cherry Point Fish Boil. Which is in Shelby. It is in Shelby. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to have a delicious meal, and it's kind of a show. Get to light things on fire. We don't light them on fire, but they light them on fire, and that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. You have to step back so you don't lose your eyebrows. And I hear they have fantastic pie. They do, with ice cream. Ooh, even better. So much ice cream this week. We might like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> There's a theme here. Hmm. That's just a, a summer theme, though, mm. ice cream. It but is. that should be lots of fun, so make sure you are signed up for that if you aren't already. It'll be great. And on Thursday, the 29th, we have a couple of fun events. We have uh, Chris Campbell coming back for more Tai Chi in the gym, and that is just a really nice, relaxing, probably hour-long practice that he does, and he's really very good. So it's a nice way to kind of get moving and practice on your balance and just take some time to be calm. Wonderful. We all need that. We do. Especially before we kick into a luau party a at 3 o'clock in Lula. the backyard. And I can't hula dance, so nobody ask. I know you're going to ask. Now you know. Everyone <laughs> teach Noah how to hula dance. Please. Hula lesson. So we'll yeah. have music, we'll have cocktails, we'll have food, we'll have lots of fun and friends, and yeah. hopefully some beautiful summer weather. We have uh, ukulele music. Ooh, that'll we'll be out. fun. Yeah, so nice and luau -y. That should be lots of fun at Lua three. <laughs> That's a new word I made I up. I like it. That'll be at 3 o'clock in the backyard. And how are we ending our summer week? Well, we're ending our summer week on bikes. Ooh. Folks on Spokes are headed out for another wonderful ride. And we'll head out to yet another coffee shop. Fantastic. So it should be fun. Join us at 9 a.m. Well, that's about all we have going on here this week, yes. but we have something fun to share with you. We'd like to share with you an interview with our own Joan Conway. Yeah, let's check it out. Good morning, all of you people, all of you residents who are watching this morning. We have a really good interview today, and I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I am sitting here next to Joan Conway. Hi, Joan. Hi. Well, I hope you're not over-anticipating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll come through. And what a funny thing. We come together and we come, the colors are matching together, so it's got to be a good day. Right. Oh. So how are you today? Okay? I'm fine, thank you. Good. That's what I like to hear because we're going to talk a little bit about you and maybe we can go back and everybody knows that you have a huge grand piano and everybody yeah. knows how that came here right too much they know they know all of that okay so maybe we can talk about some other things about when you were studying where did you live did you live in New York City in Manhattan where did you live um, I got my 
undergrad degree in Southeast Pennsylvania at Lebanon Valley College. And then my teachers suggested I audition for Manhattan School of Music because there was a teacher there he thought would be good for me. So I did. And I was accepted, got a scholarship, and went back home and said, I'm going to New York. And what did your parents say to that? <laughs> I always wanted to go to New York because I wanted to know where the, what the best music was, the best musicians, the highest standard. Mm -hmm. uh, they were a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> did, but, they, did they go there with you or did you just hop on a plane and go? No, they took me in the car and a faculty member at my undergrad school had been a friend of Robert Mann, the first violinist in the Juilliard String Quartet. And he and his wife needed a nanny. And so they suggested me. So when I went to New York, my parents somehow found their way to Morningside Heights on the west side a 20-some story apartment building. I don't know if I'd ever been in a building that high, <laughs> except on a school trip to Empire State Building, probably. <laughs> so I hopped in and went to the 20th floor, and here's Robert Mann and his wife Lucy and their two kids. Oh. And I moved into Lisa's room the little girl who was there then about four uh -huh. and had a sort of cot in her room and it must have been a really small closet oh. <laughs> and there I was in a Jewish kosher household. I of course. knew nothing about kosher uh, a preparation of the preparation, food or the, dishwashing, or, or the you know, time of the week right, right. or any of that. Never changed a diaper. Well. <laughs> and there I was. Oh. But you learned it very quickly, I imagine. Not very well. No. Oh. I was a bad nanny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know where I practiced. I think I practiced at International House nearby, which charged like 10 cents an hour to practice. Because the man's had a wonderful Steinway piano, but I didn't feel comfortable sitting down playing it. Uh -huh. And people like Brooke Smith, who was Heifetz accompanist, and Leonid Hambro, would come to visit in Peter Bart talk. Yes. And I was very intimidated. Well, those are impressive names. Yeah, yes. As well you should be. <laughs> right. So, so, so you went somewhere else to rehearse. I did. Mm -hmm. And I would take Lisa out for walks. And even though she's four years old, she wanted to have lipsticks, high heels, and diapers and go in a baby carriage. So I'd take her to Cherry Park and people would look in and go <laughs> with fright. So about March, I decided I had to get out of there. And I found a, a room in what looked to be a beautiful building, beautiful old stone building on 116th Street. Uh, but the rooms were really sleazy and... But the price was right? The price was right because I had no money. <laughs> I guess. And uh, no piano. So I had to rent a s terrible studio upright. But I was happy as a clam the bedspread was just sleazy, dirty, <laughs> and I read all night 
Henry James I was reading then, and then practice all day. And uh, down the hall lived an Australian retired nurse with a red wig who would say, dear, you don't eat enough, and she'd bring me a baked potato. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents came, and they opened the desk drawer and cockroaches walked out, and my dad said, we got to get her out of here. My mother said, leave her alone, she'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and so you stayed there for a while? That then? was my second home. I stayed there for a year and a half, mm -hmm. and then I moved to West 87th. I had a roommate who was studying violin in New York. I'd known her from Bayview, where I played mm. on the artist staff in mm -hmm. Michigan in mm -hmm. the summer. Mm -hmm. So we got this apartment. It was more like a livable place. And, uh, and more like mother would approve. Yeah, yeah. It okay. wasn't great, but it was a big studio apartment with courtyard out back. Ooh, nice. So one night, a singer friend of mine, I was accompanying for his voice lessons, and he came with a friend, John Corigliano, who's now a famous composer, and his father was controversy in New York Philharmonic. They came to visit and they brought a cat on a string. <laughs> and I was a sucker for cats, so I said, okay, we'll keep it. And uh, it turned out the cat was not fixed and was in heat. And every cat in New York City was <laughs> howling outside. <laughs> our courtyard window. <laughs> so I stayed there two years. Uh -huh. And then I went to the most fascinating place. Where was that? I lived three years in the old Metropolitan Opera House before they... In it? In it. Really? And it wasn't meant to be lived in. It was meant to have some office space. Um, there was a couple, Inga Wank and George Layton College, who ran a business placing the singers who wanted to get church jobs, synagogue jobs, Catholic funerals. Mm -hmm. And they had office space in there. And then a friend of mine, that I knew from Bayview was one of the first female accompanists in New York, and she lived down the hall from them and played all their auditions and had a little saucer and people would put some money for her and then she would get clientele to coach. And so I got a room in that apartment and we had no refrigerators or stoves, but next door lived a man named Dr. Manley Price Boone, and his claim to fame was he taught George Beverly Shea, Billy Graham's I didn't famous. know that. Yeah, yes. He went, he was also there? I he was there George also. Beverly Shea. Did he, you meet him? Did you meet George Beverly Oh, I didn't Beverly meet George Shea, Beverly no. Shea, but I sure met Dr. Boone because he fed us. <laughs> he would bring delicious soups <laughs> and he would say, we'd say, oh, Dr. Boone, that's so good. And he'd say, it's been on the hot plate for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes food is more important than music. Or right. <laughs> There's a point where you need both. He had two grand pianos in his room, and he would go to the bakery and buy a day-old pie and stack it on the piano and eat one piece and leave the rest. So he had stacks like this of uneaten pies, and he had a bunch of shiny double-breasted old suits that hung on hangers on his lamps 
all around the apartment. And I would practice in there. Did any of this amaze you that this was going on? Or did you just say, oh, this is the way it is? I know. I did. You just kind of absorbed it and said? But as I look back, I think, oh my gosh. No. I never could do it again. And certainly none of my students ever would have lasted. No, <laughs> no. But you were so adaptable. You just said, oh, well, this is what it is, right? Yeah. And you were wanted to get along with your career. So where did you go from there? So, while I was, during those years, I was playing in voice studios, ballet studios, violin studios, all around the city, and outside of the city, and taking buses, subways. Well, you learned the city very well then, didn't you? I did. Mm -hmm. And finally, at my last apartment, I got a car and started to drive around, which... Was that better? It, it certainly was. I had a little VW Beetle. Oh, you uh, a little car. Good. Yeah, a little one. You can just poke around. Right. Good. And can you believe I was able to park it at a Holiday Inn garage down the street from where I was living then on 57th Street um, for $40 a month and they would bring in the car to me when I was ready. <laughs> I like leave. that. I like that. Here's your car, <laughs> madame. Yes. <laughs> so, and that was my last apartment in New York, which was on West 57th Street and 10th Avenue. How many, then, okay, those are your years there in Manhattan, and where where did you go from there? Did, and when did you decide to leave that and well, go somewhere else? I was getting kind of scared, because uh, it was... The neighborhood? No, I never had any problems like that in all my years there. No. But um, making a living was getting harder and harder. Because and how were you? By accompanying? And by teaching. Oh, and teaching. I picked up students. Mm -hmm. I had students in mm -hmm. uh, peak skill. Mm -hmm. And I did vocal coaching at Sarah Lawrence College. Oh, and I what, just... What haven't you done? My goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Meanwhile, trying to practice and play concerts when I could. So I had What made was your ultimate goal? Did you want to be a concert pianist? I wanted to be a college teacher, I think. You did. And and you did. I did it. And you came here then. Came I had kind of decided I wanted to get out of New York. It was enough already. Good background. And though. another year went by and I all the jobs that came up were down south, and in the late 60s, mm. I didn't want to go down south, and I didn't want a company job where I had to play 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So I resigned to stay there, and I got a phone call, and this voice said, this is Dr. Anthony Koiker. How would you like to teach at Hope College? And you said... Now, that's so amazing because today that job would have 150 applicants, all with doctorates. But back then, you didn't need a doctorate. Nobody had doctorates. What degree did you have at that point? A master's. You had your master's. Performance. Mm -hmm. Well, how had he heard about you? Through um, a colleague at Bayview. Ah, once Summer again, Bayview music. comes into here. Right. Once again. And they, he had told Quaker and Kavanaugh at Hope that they were looking for a piano teacher. And so he recommended me. And I guess Hope had dawdled and not filled the position earlier in the year. So... When he called me, I said, what's Hope College? I had never heard of it or really? the Reformed Church. Really? 
I mean, now I know Marble Collegiate Church and yes. so forth, but I didn't then. So I said, yeah, I'll come audition. So I told my neighbor, you got to call me so I don't miss my plane. I got up at 5 a.m. I drank 11 cups of coffee from the time I left till the time I got to Holland. <laughs> it's a wonder I could play at all because I was so <laughs> jittery. And uh, I remember a lot of Freedom Villagers know Santita Holloman and Tony Koiker, and they were standing in the old uh, GR airport. It looked oh, yeah. like a cornfield to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I imagine coming from New York City and there, yeah, that would look like a well, cornfield. I grew up in a small town, but it's still. <laughs> so I went, they drove me to Hope, I played an audition for the faculty standing around in what was then Snow Auditorium in the old music building. Oh. Had an interview with Moret Ryder, who was the dean, and he was one who wanted a pianist from away from this area. So he was happy that I came from New York. He liked that. And, uh, now you were quite young then at, at that age, weren't you? I think I was 35. 35, and oh, that's a long time that you spent out in New York, and now you're 13 here. years, yeah. yeah. What a background, that's very interesting, very. And so here comes this young person at the age of 35 with all this background from New York City, and you're coming to Holland, Michigan. <laughs> How is that? Well, it was funny because uh, they took me for lunch to the old elbow room in Saugatuck. Yes. <laughs> yes. I thought this is a very weird place. <laughs> and right, Bob right. Cecil was one of the faculty and he had pants that were like three inches too short. <laughs> what a thing to remember. I do. <laughs> Watch your pants legs, men. <laughs> okay. So the dean offered me $7,000 a year, and I said, well, doesn't my experience count for something? Yeah. And he said, okay, we'll give you nine. Oh. So I signed the paper, <laughs> found an apartment. Maury Ryder's wife took me around, found an apartment on 20th and Decima. And I flew back and told my friends goodbye. <laughs> Just like that. I'm leaving. Well, you're a. I think you are a woman of decision making, yeah, or and also someone who can make herself feel pretty comfortable in whatever situation you're in. You um, think that's true? As I look back, I guess I did. Yes, but yeah. even now as well. And you're here. Well, this job was perfect for me. It was just the perfect job. The teaching, the performing, the running the faculty recital series, everything right. about it, colleagues. I just, yeah, that is a, that's a, just a really, really interesting and well, what else can I, I can't, I don't know what else to ask you. Well, you're just so content in where you are. I yeah. am, and I'm glad to be at Freedom Village. Yeah, and we're just so happy One more you're good. here and with your free at three in the afternoons. It's, and so you still have your influence and it's here. We're just so glad you're here, Joan. I'm so glad you came to talk with us this morning. And Thank you, you. I don't. I don't really see you around a lot. Although you do come to dinner once in a while. I oh yeah. See, you know. Oh, you don't want to miss dinner. No, no. Okay. I don't want to <laughs> miss dinner. That's great. Thank you so much for the time. We. That's just. Uh, we can imagine all those lives that the parts of your lives that you had in the background, and that's just a very colorful background you have. Thank you for sharing all of that with us. Thank you. Wow, I didn't know that about Joan. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Very interesting. Yeah, wonderful. So, Ashley. Noah. I have a question. Okay. It's a little weird. 
A little nonsensical? Maybe. All right. Okay. What you, you got for you me? You can put it in that category, I okay. suppose. I would like to know what the strangest thing in your fridge is right now. The strangest thing in my fridge. Since we're appreciating refrigeration well, yes. this week, and I was just wondering, what's the weirdest thing you've kept in there? Or mm. you, right now, maybe right not now. ever, but okay. what's in okay. your fridge right now that's a little bit weird? There are probably eight jars of pickles. Are they all open? Mostly. Because are they they're all different. Yes. Okay. Yes. So just like a large collection of pickles. A large collection of pickles. Okay. What's in your fridge? Um, I'm trying to think. In my tiny fridge, there's not a room for a lot of extras. Mm -hmm. I have... I have kimchi mm. in my fridge, which is sort of strange. I'd say not many people here probably have mm -hmm. that. I like to put that on my toast in the morning, mm. kimchi and toast. What else do I have that's a little weird? I'm going through all the shelves in my head. <laughs> um, I have a lot of hot sauce. Mm. I'm a big fan of hot sauce, like the hotter the better, but you need different hot sauce varieties for different meals. Absolutely. So I have quite a few different hot sauces and there are a few that must be refrigerated. So those are in my fridge. Okay, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Let's see if anyone here's got anything strange in let's, their refrigerator. Let's see. It's Monday morning and you know what that means. <laughs> it's time for nonsense. Nonsense with Noah. Let's hit the hogs. Could I ask you a question? What is the strangest thing in your fridge right now? Strangest thing in what? In your refrigerator. Uh, some tamales. Some tamales? Yeah. What kind? Hmm? Uh, like pork, chicken? So these are pork tamales. Pork tamales. From the Santa Fe market up on Butternut drives. Oh. Uh, do you have anything strange in your refrigerator right now? <laughs> what would it be? I don't know, just a lot of little sauce things that we never use. <laughs> All the little sauce things from dinners? Yeah. A collection of sauce. <laughs> sure. What is the strangest thing in your refrigerator right now? Oh my. Um some kind of odd makeup that my daughter bought and it needs to be refrigerated. Refrigerated makeup? I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. She's 12. Well, <laughs> you know, we don't ask too many questions when they're 12. <laughs> right now. Oh boy. Um. <laughs> I don't know, just some old, I had some old pizza sauce in there. Not that's Old probably, pizza sauce. It was in there for several months and I oh, forgot about it. It might have gotten a little strange then. Yeah, then I threw it away. Good. Your fridge, Good. that's weird, Tim. I think I have buffalo jerky in my fridge. Could you tell me why you keep it in the fridge? I cannot answer that. <laughs> I don't know. Great. Thank you. Sure. Well, that has been the Monday Morning Show. We are so glad you've tuned in for another week with us. And we cannot wait to see you next week. And that's Ashley. That's Noah. And this has been Monday Morning. Bye. Bye.